What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So last week I was sitting around wishing for a particular tool in SketchUp thinking it would really change my workflow. Turns out it exists as an extension. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so you've all probably heard me rave a little bit about Lattice Maker. It is a great tool for creating like storefront style windows, right? Because you can take this lattice, you can set it to give it a depth and it'll like offset multiple windows like this um, in order to give you this kind of like storefront look. Now, I love Lattice Maker, but it has a little bit of a problem, right? And this is actually a thing you run into a bunch when you're modeling in SketchUp. Um, so the problem is it offsets all of these faces individually like this. And so that means that your interior mullions right here are thicker than your exterior because they're kind of doubled up. Now there's a couple solutions for this in a tool set that I've been kind of sleeping on a little bit, but uh, I really want to get into a little bit further. Stick around to the end because there's a cool tool from these guys that makes this even easier that I'm gonna talk about at the end of the video. So first off, let's talk about if we were to do this manually, there is a tool from S for you, which you may have heard of before, which is gonna make this a lot easier, right? Because if I come in here and try to do this manually, I'm gonna have the same problem, right? Say that I want my exterior frame to be one inch, but then these interior frames need to be a half inch this way and a half inch this way to make everything uniform. Well, right now, if I do this, I can only offset these individual faces, right? I can do like a point or a, we'll say one inch right here. And then I could use the offset tool and double click in order to create these manually, but I have the same problem. Another option would be to pick up your border edges, right? Like this. So we could select all these border edges, offset them like this and offset in by whatever, call it one inch, right? So I'm gonna type in an inch right here. So that would work, but then you have to manually move these edges right here, right? You can create a copy here that's gonna be a half inch, create a copy here, it's gonna be a full inch, and then you're kind of at the at that thickness that you're looking for, but it's a lot of extra steps. So what I wanted to talk about first is a tool from S4U called S4U Offset. And so I do wanna note, this is a paid extension. And so you can get S4U Offset, I think, these are subscription. Um, you can get it for like $10 a year or something like that. So less than a dollar a month, 100% worth it. Or you can just get this whole pack for like $39 a year, um, which if, if you look at that monthly, that is not very expensive at all. That's gonna come with a lot of these different tools. But um, if you just wanna do S4U offset, you can do that. Now I'll give you a reason why you want, might want another one in here in a second. But um, I, I think part of the reason I haven't really gotten into this is because this page isn't really visually impressive right um, so it's a little hard to tell like what some of these things are doing there's some really powerful tools in here we'll talk more about them in the future but in this case we're gonna use s4u offset and what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the ability when you select edges so say that we pick up the perimeter right and I'm using uh, selection toys in order to only select the border edges so I'm gonna go ahead and offset this in by one inch, but say now I wanna offset these two edges, well S4U offset is gonna give you the ability to select those edges like this, and you can offset them in a direction, right? Which is cool because you could use this to go one inch here, one inch here. You do need to make sure you hit enter after you do that, but you could use it to do things just like that. This is gonna allow you to offset both edges in a direction like this and you can actually set the direction so if you wanted them to go like off of this you could do that i want them to stay on this face right here now that by itself is powerful right because i could type in like 0.5 hit the enter key then run it again 0.5 hit the enter key but you don't need to do that and the reason you don't need to do that is because this actually has a function if you right click and click on both sides it will offset singular edges in two directions just like this so now i can type in a value of 0.5 right and all of a sudden whoops and that's one thing i don't like about it is you have to hit the enter key twice so enter and then enter again to finalize it. But notice how now I offset those edges and I have multiple edges in here. I did them all 0.5 really quickly. So say that we had a window like this one, right? And in this case, we're gonna divide it multiple directions. So divide it by three, divide it by three, stand by. There we go, like this. Okay, so first off I could pick up the border edges so select only border edges, offset those in by an inch. 
Okay, so what I could do instead is I could pick these up and I'm using selection toys in order to deselect the faces. You only want the edges, not the faces. But now if I use this, look at this, you can use this in order to offset all of these edges just like this. So now you've got all this stuff in here and it's all to the same thickness. So now your interior mullions are the same thickness as your perimeter mullions, which is super, super powerful, right? Now I can just push pull this out like this. Obviously I've got some stuff I need to clean up in here, but that's okay. All right, so another place where this process is painful is if you're ever working with cabinets, right? And I've got two components right here. I need to create a cabinet door. And so a lot of the time what I end up doing is copying this and I end up doing an edit paste in place right here, but then I also need to offset it in a little bit because if I just create a cabinet door like this, right? So we'll make this a component. I'm gonna cut it, put it back in here with an edit paste in place, but notice how those doors have no gap on them. So if I render this out, this is just gonna look like a uniform edge, which I don't really like. Um, so that's not gonna look very good. However, with S4U offset, what you can do is you can pick a face, right? Like this one, you can run S4U offset, but notice how there's an option we don't want both sides. But what this is gonna do is this is gonna let us do a group offset. What that means is that means that if I offset this in by 0.125 or an eighth of an inch, hit the enter key, notice what that did is that created that offset as a group in here. Now I do have to heal across the face like this, but now if I push pull this out by whatever, three quarters of an inch, notice how I have a cabinet door inside of my cabinet right here using S4U offset that has the little bit of offset here around the perimeter. So you've got this gap that's gonna render out really nice. So that group offset is also super, super powerful. Okay, so for me, just the cabinet thing and the window thing by itself, being able to do those offsets is worth the price of entry, but there's other functions in this tool as well. So if I activate this, right, activate the offset tool like this, and we're going to right click on it and just double click what we have selected. But notice how, or we're gonna double check what we have selected. But if I type in star five, hit the enter key, Notice what this is gonna do is this is going to create five offsets. And you can type in a length, right? So if I type in two, hit the enter key, it's going to create five equally spaced offsets like this. Now you could also do that with the both sides selected like this, right? So you could do times three of your mouse. Notice how it's offsetting these in multiple different directions like this. I'm gonna hit the enter key. We're gonna be good to go again like this. So that is also super powerful. Now, if you don't have faces in here, you may have to do, you may have to do just a tad bit of healing in here on some of the corners, just to make sure these surfaces are complete, but not a big deal at all. Um, but then there's also a function in here for random offset, which I'm not gonna lie, I, I can't think of a ton of situations where I might wanna use a random offset, but it is an interesting function, right? You activate this, click, and then you do a random offset. We're gonna type in times, we'll say times four right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna randomly space an offset. We'll set it so it's just going in one direction. But notice how it's like randomizing the distance based on where your mouse is of that offset. So you can use this to create random offsets as well, which is definitely an interesting function this. All right, so one other thing I found myself doing uh, last night as I was creating kind of a sample floor plan for uh, one of the live calls in my SketchUp course is I actually found myself, whenever you're finding like a midpoint of a wall to create a door. So say for example, I wanted a door centered in this room. Well, a lot of the time what we've done in the past is we've drawn a line like this and we'll draw um, a line that's gonna be one foot six inches this way. Draw a line that's gonna be three feet this way. And then we come in and close it in like this, right? Um, but one of the things you can do with this tool that's a lot faster is you can just find the midpoint of your wall and just draw a line. And then when you activate this tool with the both sides active, you can just type in one foot, six inches, hit the enter key, and it'll offset this in both directions. So creating door openings centered in walls is actually super easy 
using this tool. So I wasn't even gonna include this in my first in, in my first pass of this video, but I did this just kind of working last night and I really, really like it. But I did want to show you one other thing that S4U also offers, which is another reason why you might just want to go with that whole collection. What you might not have noticed in here when we scrolled through is there is actually an option for S4U frame. And so what S4U frame is, is it's a $9 extension, which is basically like Lattice Maker. By the way, you can click on these buttons right here in order to get more information. Um, and this takes you to the wrong one, which is funny. But um, basically S4U frame, what it's gonna do is it's gonna be like Lattice Maker, but it gives you the ability to set the thickness of those interiors, right? So I'm gonna type in eight foot, comma, four foot. Whoops. foot comma four foot right here we'll go ahead and split this face up but if you use s4u frame and i can do a separate video on this one by the way but if you use s4u frame what this is going to do is you can pick all of those faces and you can set a frame kind of like you can in lattice maker but notice how there's an option in here for your border width as well as your frame width and so what that means is that means that you can actually set this up where your border is one inch, but your frame is a half inch, right? So if we select this right here, notice what it's going to do is it's going to create your border. And if we measure it, it's going to be one inch wide. So where is my tape measure tool? There it is. All right. So if we measure this frame, this frame is one inch wide, but this interior frame is a half inch. So you can use this in order to create equally sized or smaller objects in the frame in here as well. So if we do the same thing right here, so we're just gonna pick up this whole thing and we're going to do the same thing. And we're gonna set our frame height to be 0.5. And so if we run this, notice how on the interior these mullions are smaller, right? So these are only a half inch like this. So massive time saver from that standpoint. Now, the, the only thing I don't like about this one, and I've not played around with this offset function, so I'm not sure what that does. The only thing I don't like about this one is the way the material works. Usually the best way to do this is gonna be to apply the glass material before and then run the tool. So then it's gonna come in here and it's going to create those just like this. But you can see how you can use this in order to create those more complex windows, just like this. All right, so both of these, super cool, especially depending on what you're trying to do. I'm especially pumped about the S4U offset because that's gonna save me a ton of time with cabinet doors. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these tools. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.